Hello students, in this video, I will be giving you a summary for Merchant of Venice Act 1, Scene 2. So let's start. Now this scene ships to Belmont and we could see Portia and Nerissa in this scene. And this scene starts with Portia saying that by my troth Nerissa, my little body is aware of this great world. Means she is feeling very tired. Act 1, scene 2. So, it starts with Portia saying that her little body is aware of this great world. Means she is really tired by my troth Nerissa. So, and Nerissa, obviously you could clearly see here that just as in scene 1, it started with Antonio saying that he was feeling tired and such a war with that sadness has made of him that he has much ado to know himself. He was sad and here Portia too is feeling tired. She also seems depressed. And obviously, eventually in this Merchant of Venice, the two persons who are depressed and sad at the start of the play will be helping each other finally. Just as uh, like Antonio collecting money from Shylock and giving it to Bassanio. With that Bassanio will be marrying Portia. And Portia on knowing about the circumstances will be helping and saving Antonio from clutches of Shylock. So let's continue. So Portia said that by my troth Nerissa my little body is aware of this great world. She was feeling tired. Now Nerissa obviously said that it is good to be tired. Because too much of anything is not good. And you have too much of everything. So it is good that you are feeling tired. You are feeling sad out there. Here you could see the complete different approach. While Antonio was sad at the start. The other people along with him. Salanio and Salerno. They were trying to make him merry. And giving the examples that or the reasons that why he could be sad. But here Nerissa is saying that it is good. It is good to be sad. So here you could see a completely different approach that you should be madam if your miseries are in abundance as your good fortunes are and she considers that those who have much of something they become safe. So this way Nerissa tries to prove her point and hearing that Portia said good sentence and well pronounced and Nerissa suggested that it would be good if you follow it too. It would be good if you follow it to. As Nerissa said this thing that it will be good if you follow it to, what happens? Portia said that it is not easy like that. To speak and to do that same thing is quite a different matter. I could teach 20 people something but it is very difficult to follow my own teaching or become one of those 20 persons. And if it happens then chapters would have become churches and poor man's cottage as prince, prince's palace. So it was a very difficult or a completely change of things, change of understanding. Now after that she is saying that this youth is just like a madness and it skips over the good ideas or advices which are given to him. Such a hair is madness, such a hair is youth that it always skips over the measures of good fortune. At that time she also felt sad that for her the word choose. It has no value because she could not refuse the person whom she, whom she disliked and could not select the person whom she liked. Then she said to Nerissa that is it not hard Nerissa? First you should remember the chapel and churches example. Chapel and church. Then about the hair. Whatever Koshia said about the hair. And then she says that is it not hard Nerissa that will of a living daughter is curbed by the will of a dead father. Will of a living daughter. Will of a living daughter. These are the things Portia had said up to now. The will of a living daughter is curbed by the will of a dead father. Now what happens on hearing this Nerissa told Portia, says to Portia that your father was a ever virtuous man. Your father was a virtuous man. And these virtuous men have good ideas or thinkings 
or they could just think how they could save the interest of the ones they love on their deathbed. And so his father has devised this plan of casket, gold, silver and lead. So from Nerissa we got to know about the casket for the first time. That there is a selection procedure going on and Nerissa said that obviously your father was a virtuous person and virtuous person at the deathbed have some ideas how to safeguard the interest in the life of the remaining persons. And so he, she suggested that your father has devised this rule of casket selection, gold, silver and lead and that only could be selected by those persons, only that person who truly loves her and is truly suitable for her. That she said about the casket virtuous man and about the casket. About the casket you came to know. Then Elisa asked that but what about the suitors who have arrived up till now? Do you have any attraction towards any one of them? So many suitors have arrived. So you, do you like any of the suitors? That is the question she asked that so many suitors have arrived. Just what your, do you like any one of them? And here Portia said just name them, name them, name them and I will describe them. Name them and I will describe them. And through my description, you could realize what affection I have for those people. Now, the naming of all the suitors. There were in total six suitors. First, Neapolitan Prince. Second, County Palatine. Third, French Lord Monsieur Le Bon. Fourth, the Englishman Falconbridge, young Baron of England. Fifth, the Scottish Lord. And finally, from German Duke of Saxony's nephew. They are the suitors of them. So, there were the six suitors, Neapolitan Prince, County Palatine, French Lord, Monsieur Le Bon, Englishman, Falcon Bridge, Young Baron from England, Scottish Lord, and lastly, the German. So, these are the suitors, and Portia insulted all of them. Number one, you should remember, in this, you should remember what was said about all of them. Part A, Neapolitan Prince, I a cult indeed. Then second part, uh, County Palatine. County Palatine has a bad habit of frowning. Has a bad habit of frowning. French Lord, marrying him will be like marrying 20 husbands. Because he don't have a personality of his own 20 husband because he don't have a personality of his own then part B it was the Englishman Englishman was the one whom only Portia praised saying that he is a proper man's picture a proper man's picture proper man's picture but how oddly he is dressed how oddly he is suited again the insult and then after that it is the Scottish Lord, immediate after it was the Scottish Lord, Scottish Lord who got the box in the ear from the Englishman, box in the ear from the Englishman and he said he would be taking revenge when he is able to. And the French Lord become his surety or guarantor that, yes I have seen, I have heard that this person is saying that he will take revenge when he is suitable. And finally, the German. The German who about whom it was saying very widely in the morning when he is sober and obviously it was the biggest of all insults saying about that person that he is no better than a man, he is not a man itself, he is just like some animal. In this way all these suitors were being insulted. And now on hearing all this finally Nerissa asked that what if the German wins the casket? What would happen if the German wins the casket? If you, if, if you don't wish to marry her, then you are going against the rule of your father. At that time, there is Portia said that for that reason, she wants to uh, alter this, that person's decision by putting a glass of Rhenish wine, by put, putting a glass of Rhenish wine on the contrary casket for the German. Because even if there is a devil inside and outside there is a Rhenish shrine, that person 
would surely select the casket having the wine and in that way she is ready to change or alter the decision of the german on hearing all these things after hearing all these things all the description of the suitors finally nerissa revealed nerissa revealed that none of the suitors were ready to marry her and they all have decided that they will be leaving this place this obviously why it has been it coming in the later part that why they all have rejected they all not going to select the casket on hearing this portia must have felt very relieved and so she again started to speak about that if i live as old as sibilla i will die as chaste as diana the sibilla and the diana example okay obviously sibilla was given the boon that her life would be like the grain of sand she is holding on her hand and diana as chaste so she is saying that even if i live such old i will die as diana as chaste as diana because no one is going to marry me under such conditions at that moment nerissa asked that do you remember lady that your father's time a young venetian has arrived at the, at the count of montferrat along with count of montferrat a young venetian a scholar a young venetian and scholar who met along with count of montferrat and portia immediately said yes yes his name is basanio his name is basanio or so as it is told because portia doesn't want to show herself so keen and remembering the name of basanio in front of nerissa so first she was excited on hearing the name hearing the description and saying yes yes his name was basanio then immediately she thought that as it was called like that he is just recollecting so she said about venetian and then nerissa said that yes madam true madam and he is the one who i find suitable on looking by my polish eyes i find that person suitable for you i find that person suitable for you and portia said i remember him well and i remember him worthy for your praise you are praising that person i remember that very well that that person is really praise worthy as these things were going on a servant entered a servant entered with a message that four strangers are seeking for you madam four strangers are seeking for you madam and there is a foreigner from the fifth one prince of morocco saying that his master will be here and now just as portia was very happy at that time hearing that all the suitors are leaving again becomes sad that another one is coming to try his luck that is prince of morocco and so she said and in the scene that just as we are shutting the door we are closing the door for the one suitor another one came knocking at the door another suitor is coming knocking at the door this ends merchant of venice act 1 scene 2 now this ends the scene and you could see these are the points but apart from that one thing that uh, you might question that why the four strangers are being mentioned here you know that there were six suitors in total so why four strangers are mentioned obviously you must remember four strangers the word strangers comes from a french word strangers meaning foreigner four foreigners here are being mentioned remember only four foreigners were there they are the frenchmen englishmen scottish lord and german neapolitan prince and count palatine are obviously from italy itself they are not the foreigners and so they are from italy itself so they are not the foreigners and four strangers means four foreigners so actually it is about these four persons french englishman scottish lord and german for that reason four strangers have been mentioned by shakespeare all right not six suitors have been mentioned because two of them are from italy itself they are not the strangers or not the foreigners so this ends the summary of merchant of venice act 2 act 1 scene 2